Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. My special guest tonight is Drew Shepard from the Galloway Running Team. Where to start? Almost 16 years ago, Drew had his impossible dream to run where very few have run before. This past Boston, Drew, thanks to his family, his classmates, and his Galloway running family, ran his 50th state and his sixth world major marathon. He is a six-star finisher. He did this with panache and style. I'm thrilled to have Drew, un hombre de bueno, as my guest. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Drew, Boston. Yes. Your 50th state. But not only that, somehow you managed to plan it to be your sixth world major marathon. So tell us, when did you realize you were going to do Boston, that Boston was going to be your last one? Actually, from the start, like 16 years ago, when I came up with the idea that I was going to run all 50 states, all seven continents, and the world majors, I knew that qualifying for Boston probably wasn't going to happen and that I was going to have to raise money for charity. So I deliberately waited to have that be last. So I started with a spreadsheet, had my list of all the different races I wanted to do, and I plugged Boston in to be the last one so that I could actually finish there. I knew it would be close enough that I could have some friends come up. I went to school in New England, so I knew I could have some of my former classmates there. And I had hoped, and I was able to have my family there as well. In fact, I think you had the Drew crew. Yes. Say that fast, 12 <laughs> times. <laughs> yes, there was lots of merchandise over the weekend of Drew's crew on my family and my friends. Uh, they were the best supporters possible, and they really made it an amazing day. Well, actually, you mentioned charity, so it's actually a triple win. Not only did you do your 50th state and your sixth major, but you ran for charity and raised quite a bit of money, like over $15,000. Correct. It was an excellent organization called the Last Call Foundation. It was founded after the death of a firefighter, Michael Kennedy. He was scheduled to run the 2014 Boston Marathon, and he died just a few weeks before in a fire. And his mother, in his honor, created this organization, and they've done such amazing, wonderful things for uh, the city of Boston, as well as nationally, like pushing for reform, helping secure equipment, um, so the money went and is, continues to go to really great causes. And I had over 170 people uh, donate over $15,000. So I'm incredibly proud of that. And mm -hmm. then on race day, yeah. at the final push, when you turn left onto Boylston, we actually go by Michael's old uh, firehouse. Oh, so wow. it was a fantastic push. Uh, to go there to the to the final. Oh, I'm moment. sure the firemen were out there to yes. you guys on and uh, honking probably their horns and taking lots of fun. Absolutely. Well, Drew, let's let's go back in time. Tell us where you were born. A little bit about your childhood. Sure. I grew up in New Jersey, so not far. But to us, the city was Philadelphia, uh, not New York. I was I was South Jersey. I did. Very little sports I, in, in growing up. I mean, I did one season of soccer, one season of baseball, one season of basketball. When I was in high school, I did take up winter and spring track. I remember going out for track, and the first practice, it was to run two loops around the track, and I could barely do it. And the coach came out and ran with me uh, to help me finish. And I think a lot of people expected that I would not come back the next day but I think I'm stubborn. And I decided I'm gonna actually continue at this and keep going. Can't say that I ever fell in love with running back then. Um, I've tried to find that old coach to let him know that here we are, you know, all 35 years later and uh, I'm running and actually love the sport. Uh, just to let him know that, because I think he would be amazed. Okay, in high school, you decided to go to college. Correct. Which college did you go and what did you major in? I was Providence College in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, I was a double major of English and theater and loved it. It was a great small little school um, and I'm now part of our National Alumni Association Council. So I'm still heavily involved in uh, the, the continuation of my school and, 
and all the amazing things that they do. Oh, that's uh, great. In fact, that. last year you celebrated your 30th reunion. Correct. I think you were the, ch the chairman of the well, thing. I was, one, I was on the committee, yes, and it was a lot of fun because I was doing a lot of uh, throwback photos from college and uh, had some completely random stuff from, you know, tickets to the formal and, uh, you know, a list of different things that we had done. Uh, so it was a, a fun walk down memory lane. Well, I guess 30 years ago, was there cell phones? <laughs> no, thankfully. I think it's a good thing. Good. So after college, you needed to decide a career for yourself. Now, theater and English, where can you go? Into retail, where I started first. I uh, worked in store management in a retail store for a number of years uh, up in the Massachusetts, Rhode Island area, and then eventually moved here to New York. I was going to try to do some theater, and uh, eventually I was doing some very off, off, off Broadway stuff, um, but unfortunately wasn't paying the bills, so I did have to get the day job. I started temping, and I got hired by a media company, um, an entry-level position, and I wound up staying there for the next 23 years. Um, that was Condé Nast? Correct. Uh, now, back then, fortunate. that was the print media. Correct. All print. Um, and it was great. Uh, it was a wonderful place to work, great place to grow up, um, and uh, it, it, was, it was a great time to be there. Uh, 23 years in any, any place is a long time. So you must have seen a lot of change from print media sure. to eventually to digital. Yes, um, I was very fortunate to, to work on several launches while I was there, not only of different brands, but also some addition initiatives, digital paywall products, uh, digital products, tied to uh, Bon Appetit and Epicurean. Yes, yes, yes. I, I remember seeing the savory the yeah. food thing here. Yes. Uh, so, the, yes, that was one of the, the projects I was involved in okay. before I left. All right. So you ran in high school. Did you run in college? No. Okay. Any sports in college? No. So no. instead, English None. and literature. So you That's probably it. saw a lot of plays. Absolutely. They still do because Absolutely. I know you every Saturday. We try to book you on a Saturday, but every Saturday you had a matinee. <laughs> How did you get back into running? How did you discover Galloway? Sure. I'm a bucket list kind of guy. And when I moved to New York, I started making a list of all the things I wanted to do as a New Yorker. And eventually I added on that I wanted to run the New York City Marathon. That was the only marathon I wanted to do. I got in in 2007 and I did no training. So I said, this is not going to be good for me. So I deferred to 2008. And for Christmas, I asked my mom to um, pay for some passes or some classes with New York Roadrunners. And I did an absolute beginner, twice a week, Roadrunners group training class. And that's where I met Michelle Patterson. And going through the 10 week session, I was talking about how I wanted to do the marathon. I had no idea how I was gonna to get to 26.2 miles. And she had told me about Galloway. And that's what got me to go to an information session. And I learned more about it. 2008. 2008 was my first season. Michelle took the New York Roadrunners class. Yeah. And you were fortunate enough to hook up with her. Absolutely. I, I say she's a life changer for me. Life changer. Or she takes a lot of credit for that. <laughs> As she should. As she should. <laughs> you know, we're related then. Yeah. Because I was the life changer for, for Michelle. For her? I had her on. You probably saw the interview. Absolutely. I learned stuff about myself talking to Michelle. Oh, my goodness. Because she remembered everything. All right. So. What did they like about the Galloway running group? Tell us about that. Team. Well, it was great to find a group that did run, walk, run. That suddenly broke down the marathon distance in a way that I thought was achievable for me. I liked that they talked about being injury free, because that's important too. I want to be able to, you know, continue with life in addition to running and the social aspect. I mean, the people I met through Galloway have been fantastic. They're lifelong friends now. And they made showing up on a Saturday morning at seven enjoyable. I mean, because it does take over a bit of your weekend because you're going to bed early on a Friday night because you know you're getting up early on Saturday. And then if you do a really long run on Saturday, Sunday you might be a recovery day. So it can start to really take over your weekend. So when you meet these people who have similar ambitions, and most of them are training for New York, uh, it's a great way to just feel that support at all times. In fact, a few of them went to Boston to see you. Yeah. Michelle Patterson was there. Yeah. And a few others. Yeah. Lynn Pulowski was there as well. Yeah. And then some people who are current members, Abina was a volunteer at, at mile 25. It was great to see her. 
So Boston, uh, obviously very special. And you got special photographs. In fact, since that was your sixth star, you saw you had the two medals. Well, how cool is that? Abbott, who runs the World Marathon Major program, they make sure that you send them your bib number and they have a message on your bib yeah. that you're entitled. Yeah. Well, if people don't know, what is the World Major Marathons? So there are six uh, world majors that are part of this program. It's New York, Chicago, Boston, London, Berlin, and Tokyo. Uh, that's the current six, I think I should say, because there are several other locations in, in consideration for becoming a major next. Uh, Sydney and Cape Town are two, and then there's one in China as well. All right, right. I, I understand. That could happen as soon as next year, they'll announce Correct. it. Correct. So a few people may have to get back into it. But lace up those shoes and get that seventh. Obviously, it'd be a whole new <laughs> constellation of metal because right now it's the six together. Correct. And Abbott has said they're going to keep the six star program and just come up with something different if they add additional majors right now. Who knows if that'll change? I was looking at some statistics. I think less than 1% of the United States, and living in the United States, done a marathon. You know, you've done many, many marathons. 62 was Boston. Correct. And the people that completed all 50 states, it's less than 2,000. You had the impossible dream to, to, to do things that very few people have done. Less than 2,000 have done all 50 states. On the other hand, the majors, so over 11,000 have done it. So it's a lot easier to do six marathons. But you also did something else that's incredible. It's called the Seven Continents. What is the Seven Continents Marathons? So in addition to doing the States, I decided I wanted to do all the continents as well because I heard of a, a great marathon-related travel company called Marathon Tours that put on a marathon on Antarctica. And I thought that sounded totally cool. <laughs> and I had no idea how it was going to make it happen, but the good thing about it is they had a several-year wait list so I could put my name on the wait list and kind of not think about it for a while. Um, but then eventually I, was, I got my spot on that. So it was actually the second continent I did. After Antarctica, I knocked off Europe. I did London next. And then also I did Easter Island in South America, which was an unbelievable trip. I did Queenstown in New Zealand and Cape Town in South Africa and Tokyo for Asia. Wow. Now... This is a journey, and things happen that are surprising. I was there when Michelle did her first marathon, and I saw what she learned. What did you learn in the past doing these, all these marathons? What did you learn about yourself? Have to be adaptable. Um, you know, I did come up with that idea of what the next 13 years would look like, because the reason for trying to do it in 13 years was I was trying to finish the 50 by the time that I turned 50. That did not happen because I turned 50 during time of COVID. So many races got canceled and delayed. So I had to adapt for that. Um, you know, I had a sketch of the different races I wanted to do because some states don't have that many options. So you have to be aware, okay, they have two races and you got to know where on the calendar they fit. Um, and then I've had injuries. So that had to, that's messed around with my, my timeline as well. And I, Finally, I don't know if that's the right word, but I had it do not finish, a DNF um, towards the end, which was a new thing for me. Where did well, that happen? It was in Africa, the Big Five Marathon. I had been scheduled to do the Amazing Maasai Marathon in Kenya in 2020. Obviously, that got canceled. It didn't come back in 21 or 22. So when it got to 2023, Marathon Tours suggested picking an alternative marathon in its place. And I knew the big five was going to be challenging for me. I'm a, a proud back of the pack runner. Um, so I know that time limits are, are tough and I knew it was a tough course. And I still picked it, um, even though that they said everyone should expect that it's going to be 25% slower than your normal marathon. Because of the terrain and the, the course, um, there's lots of, um, you know, it was running up some rocks, down some rocks, straight down. Uh, pavement, through sand. I mean, it was just, it was a brutal, <laughs> brutal course. And I, I was on mile 17 and I was on a, it seemed to me at the time, like a direct incline. And even my Garmin watch started sending me alerts saying, we're going to 
uh, alert your emergency contacts that you're not okay. And I've never experienced that before. Wow, saved by your watch. Yeah, and the you know people from the race team kept coming by and saying, we, we don't think you're doing okay. We think you should call it a day. And I kept saying, no, no, no. And eventually I said, I think they're right. And so it was mile 17 and it was you know, kind of close. There's only nine more miles. So that's a lot. <laughs> only of, nine. Well, a lot. We're, we're not feeling well, it could be yeah. an eternity. So, but once I got into the Jeep and they were taking me back, once that decision was made, I had to let it go. And it was still a great trip. I got to do all these, all these safaris. Um, you know, I, when I got back to where everybody else was, the first thing I did was say, I'm okay. Second, I said, we're okay. So let's make sure that we still have fun and enjoy this amazing experience while we're here. And then I started looking for my replacement marathon because I knew I wanted to finish Africa that year. Um, so while I was there, I found Cape Town and decided that was what I was gonna do, but I didn't tell anybody. I kept it to myself, because I was a little gun shy, I think, after the do not finish. And you know, I came back and I added in some strength training to see if maybe switching things up, not just running, would help. And I was gonna not tell anybody uh, and, until <laughs> I was actually in Africa. And I thought, if I do that to my parents, I'm going to be in trouble. So even though I'm 53 years old now, I didn't want to get grounded by my mom. So I told them like two weeks before, I was like, by the way, next week I'm going to be in Africa. Um, and I went back and I got done. And it was good for me to find out that uh, I'm adaptable and also, you know, determined. Determined. You probably always had that. But was there something new, you know? that you didn't know you had. For example, Michelle felt that she was very impatient with others. But during a marathon, she saw people were very patient with her and very caring that she was able to, to do it. She was so proud of it. And she said she learned to be patient throughout her whole life after that. Was there something that changed in you? You're already adaptable. You're already determined. I mean, I'm sure your parents had a few more adjectives about you. <laughs> But was there some other quality that he said, oh, my God, did you become, for example, more spiritual in watching and seeing nature and all its beauty and all these in all these contents? Did you see something in other? In, in, you made so many friends on all these trips. Did you see something about humanity that you didn't know about? I think a confidence I didn't know that I had. Um, maybe it was there all along, but a lot of my international trips, I went solo. So I went and didn't know anybody. And I got much more comfortable being able to walk into a room and say, hey, I'm Drew. I'm from New York. And just, you know, having the conversation, kicking it off and not being shy. Um, so I think it really helped push me out of whatever shell I might have been in. And that was hugely beneficial. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, so you became less shy. Well, you, know, you were always also a sharp dresser. <laughs> you know, you would show up and you had, you know, really cool sunglasses. And if there was a theme to that race, you know, you, you really took it to heart. You really had a lot of fun with it. In fact, I think you have the biggest collection of socks of anybody I know. Where did you learn your sense of fashion? That was just a chance to have some fun. I think that men's running clothes can be a little on the boring side. Black shorts, black top, I mean, it's not a whole lot going on. So my pro compression socks and my gooder sunglasses became my way to have a little bit more fun. And it started slowly, and then it's been kind of an obsession. Um, I'm very much aware of all the big holidays, of course, you know, the 4th of July, Halloween, but uh, you know, it was recently National Unicorn Day, and I have unicorn socks, so I'm aware of all the random little holidays that happen, and generally I'm That's celebrating. That's unicorn stuff. Wow, cool. We could wear that sock in Boston, too. Yeah. <laughs> unicorn <Yeah>. sock. <laughs> but you mentioned your, your parents. And eventually your mom and dad became part of the team in terms of, I think your mom ran as well a few races and came in in her age group, you know, top three. She start first or did you encourage her? Well, I was very lucky. They came down to my third marathon in Walt Disney World. And I think they saw one of the great things about our sport is that anybody is a runner. It doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your size, your ability. You lace up your running shoes, you can go out there and get it done. And it inspired my mom and she after that race she started doing some walking and then moved into some run walking herself 
And then she told me she'd taken up running and she wanted to go back to Disney and run the half marathon with me. So uh, she picked it up in 2009 and she's still running. And she's done two half marathons, uh, maybe like a dozen 10Ks and over 100 5Ks. And she's won her age group quite often. She'll even come up here to New York and we try to time it to when there's a race in the park and she generally does well in places for her age. I never have, so I'm a little jealous of that for her. Um, and my dad has been great too. He has joined me on many of my running trips. And when there's a 5K on that weekend, he participates. And they both came with me to Hawaii. The three of us all participated. Um, I did the full. My dad did the 5K and came in second for his age group. And wow. mom did the 10K and came in for first to her age group. So it was, it was oh, so a you, great experience. You guys could do your own podium shot, you know? <laughs> we, we did. I yeah. stood in the middle one, even though I wasn't a podium person. <laughs> but you were the favorite son. <laughs> Sounds like you're the only child. Yes, I am. But, yes, oh I am. my gosh. It's just an amazing journey if you've gone through the impossible dream and you did it. And now... You, you said you're, re you're going to retire from the marathon. Are you going to continue with the half marathons? I love the half. I think the half's the best distance. So I'm happy to be done the full marathons. When I did my final 20-mile training run, it was a joyous moment. Um, those, those training runs, which is really where most of the mileage is happening, um, can get old after a while. Great to do it with a group. So when it's Galloway training season, it's great that I'm with a group. But sometimes I'm off cycle and, and you know, some of those miles are by myself. Um, but the half, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue right. that. And continue with the Galloway running. Absolutely. Team. With the Galloway, you mentioned they, they, they change it up. They've got different routes to keep it entertaining. Not always in Central Park. Correct. Not all over the place. So when I was running with Galloway, 90% of the time we were running in Central Park. But now you, you know, you're everywhere. We make a point to go to every borough. We make a point to make sure that we do significant portions of the marathon course, which is great for first time runners who are nervous about running in New York. It's a chance to see the course. I was able to go up to Boston to do a training run before the marathon, and that was hugely beneficial because I had in my head that Heartbreak Hill was going to be another one of these like straight yeah, inclines, yeah. and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't great, but it was. You were ready that bad. for it. Yes. All right. And in fact, I think Galloway running team is starting up again soon, right? Correct, the beginning of May. Beginning in May. So we started and a little bit earlier than other that groups. Does Jeff great. Galloway come into town? And, uh... He's doing a Zoom session, I believe, coming up shortly um, with, with people who want to learn more about it. When I was uh, doing Galloway, he would come every year. Yeah. In fact, that's why I had him on the show. Yeah. Jeff Galloway, yeah, sitting where you are. Uh, he's great. Yes. He Jeff Galloway, he's the one, of course, started the, the Galloway walk, run, walk. What is your current ratio? Right now, I mean, it does depend. I, I do um, go back and forth between 60-second run, 30-second walk, and 45-second run, 30-second walk. Okay. Usually one of those. In Boston, how did, how did you do that one? I went out too fast in um, Boston, which is Dangerous not unheard of. Downhill. At downhill. The and you're excited. And I said, don't go out too fast. And of course I did. I started with 60-30, and then I switched over to 45-30. And then it was a very warm day. Yes very warm day, and I moved down to 30-30. All right, but you finished. Yeah, and I finished faster than I did in New York last year, so I was happy. So your last one, was it you the slowest one? It was nope, one of your nothing. better ones. And I was happy with it, and I felt good, and I, I didn't rush. I many people along the course, and I stopped and said hello, uh, took some photos, and like, I enjoyed every moment of it. That's so cool. It's so cool to have, to have your family there and the Galloway family there and classmates. You're very blessed. I am. That's so, the exact uh, word I kept using. So what are your future challenges then? Eventually, I'm going to finish all the states for the half marathons as well. I'm about halfway through there. Um, so I'll keep doing that. And then I enjoy traveling all over the world and will continue to do races in other countries. Uh, 5K, 10K, or so whatever. Whatever, whatever they have. Well, I have a feeling when they come out with the seventh world major, you're going to be, oh, one more time. I think <laughs> medals. You've done the 50 states. Some states, the medals are huge and some states are small. So which are the most memorable medals that you remember? Little Rock is known for their big, Little Rock, Arkansas, 
they're all about theme, which of course I love. And they have a massive medal. The one that they had the year I did it was like almost as big as my head. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's a big one. Um, Boston, just because it was finally the Boston medal. Yeah. Um, so I was excited for that. What do you do with all these medals and, uh, and ribbons? Do you put them in a, in a lock cabinet or what? No, I've got a crazy little narrow hallway into my apartment and there's not room for anything, but there was a large wall space that I can make uh, a big metal display. And that's what I've done. So there's actually, I have a shadow box for every state and has the metal, the date I ran, and my time. My, oh, in fact, I think you showed me, you sent me a little video of that. Yeah. It, it looks amazing. It must be a big apartment because I think it used up three walls. <laughs> it's all one wall. It's just, as I said, one wall, really? a narrow little entry hallway that there really is nothing else you could do you, there. You can't move because what are you going to do with all those? All well, those I said boxes? I couldn't move until I finished the 50. I finished all the boxes are full. Now they're all full, so we can, I can move. Well, Drew, any final words as we close up? It's been an amazing experience. I'm so grateful for all the people that I've met along the way, all the places I've seen. I knew Hawaii would be beautiful. I knew the Big Sur in California would be beautiful. But Alaska was amazing. And being able to see Mount Rushmore in person was amazing. So all these places that I've only seen in photos or, or movies, it was truly special to see in person get to see the United States up close and personal. Absolutely. In fact, a lot of people, when they visit a new city, they join a local running group that's up to your speed and, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the surroundings. Absolutely. Well, listen, on that note of enjoying the world, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Hi, I just finished a great conversation with Gotta Run With Will. Check it out on YouTube soon. Until then, I want to say thank you to my mother, my father, my great friends who came up to Boston to cheer me on, both in person and also through emails and text. You really made it a special, special day. All right, gotta run.